Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. I'm Rick Drayson and welcome to Rick's Corner. Somebody sent me a video today from James Tiny Vest who was talking about me uh, and I was saying that I had 30 grams of protein per meal back in the day. So I watched his channel and I watched some of his, uh, his dialogue and his knowledge on training and bodybuilding and diet, and he's really good. I really like what he does, and I think he puts a lot of really good information out there. And if you're watching me, thank you so much for the mention. I really appreciate it. Um, I might have said it was 30 grams a meal. I might be mistaken. It could have been less or more. The, the thing is that I didn't really count grams back in the day. I went by a daily total. So if I was 213, 215 pounds, I'd try to get 215 grams of protein a day, one pound per, per uh, pound of body, one gram per pound of body weight. So I would divide it up, and yes, I did the meat, the cottage cheese, and the eggs, and then I would have not so much a protein drink, because protein wasn't really big in that day, but I'd get a can of tuna fish, or to have some scrambled eggs in between. I probably had four or five meals a day and just some supplements, but it, it was not 10 or 12 meals a day. No, I don't know anybody who did that. Um, I just knew I had to keep my protein high, and then I had a just a moderate, very moderate amount of carbohydrates and some fats. I wasn't that technical about it. I didn't really know that much about it. It was all experimentation back in those days because there wasn't a lot of knowledge out about it other than the guys in the gym down in Venice that I trained with and how they ate and we kind of all did the same thing. And our workouts were basically hard. We, we split our body parts up and we would do three or four exercises per muscle group and four sets, five sets. It was a different theory back in the day when I started training. It was about trying to go heavier and heavier because you're putting a demand on the muscle and the muscle has to meet the demand. So if you go heavy, then the muscle gets bigger to meet the demand and grows. And so I would do the system of 10 reps, eight, six, four, two, and a single on benches and maybe on some other things. And then I'd go back and do 12 reps to finish them off. So, um, did I go heavy? Yeah, I went heavy. I think we all did. I think back when you're a young kid, it's, it's an ego thing and you make good development by going heavy because your muscle meets the demand. So uh, it wasn't the type of thing that you really delved into and made a science out of it. You just knew what worked for you. And what works for one doesn't work for another. You know, if, if, uh, if inclined barbells don't get your upper chest, then dumbbells might. Everybody's built differently, everybody responds differently, and, and some people get good results off high reps, and some people do low reps and heavy weight. But I think if you can kind of like mix them up a bit and have a combination of all of them, you'll get the results that you want. The protein is key. you got to have enough throughout the day to build the muscle. You need some calories and you need some carbs in order to burn energy or you'll eat your muscle up. This is true. But for the most part during those years, I was pretty good about during six days a week keeping my carbs to a real minimum. Now I can't tell you what the minimum was. It could have been 40 grams a day, it could have been 50. It wasn't anything in particular that I would write down and measure. I didn't do measurements. I just did what felt good and I looked in the mirror and it looked okay. I, I did what worked for me. And then Sunday was a junk day for everybody. And the junk day for me wasn't like Ken Waller. Ken Waller would eat pizzas and drink milkshakes. And uh, for me, a junk day would be the time I was married, my wife would make spaghetti and meatballs or have a brisket of beef or something like that. And then maybe a cheesecake for dessert and maybe an ice cream during the day. But I couldn't go crazy on it. I just, when you're used to staying in shape and keeping your waist small and you bloat it out with a lot of food, you feel miserable. And on a Sunday, if you had it Monday, you were just, oh my God, you were just nauseated from all the food. And by Tuesday, you were back on again. I still think that um, heavy weights, I'd say seven reps I would do, seven reps seem to be my number, would help me build muscle. Now I've switched as I've gotten older because of joint issues and I've gone lighter weights with 15 reps and 20 reps. That's all right for a somewhat of a pump and I think it works somewhat, but it doesn't put the demand on the muscle that it did when I went heavy. Now we all know, like I said before, that the muscle demands resistance in order to grow. 
You can resist with light weights and a lot of reps or heavy weights and smaller reps, but it attacks it differently. It doesn't always do the same thing when you do it. So you have to find what works for you. If you want to do the pyramid thing like I did, the 108642, I think it was good. But if you're going to do that, and if you're going to do 10 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, 4 reps, 2 reps, increase your weight each set until it gets to the and you're down to the 2 reps. It's pretty hard to do. You might be able to get 3 or 4 if you wanted to really do it. But I never went to failure. I didn't think that that was necessary, and it's really hard on the body. But once I got down to those 2 reps or 3 reps at the end, like I said, I dropped the weight back down and knocked out 8 to 10 reps again just to get a good flush in the muscle. So... Uh, James Tiny Vest, if that's, I guess that's your name. <laughs> I really like what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job, and thanks for mentioning me. And um, people make too much of an issue out of training. And you know, I see these trainers in the gym. You got to throw the ball. You got to do the core. You got to do this. You got to do the keto diet. And it's all these fancy names on something that we all know pretty much back in the day of just basic stuff. We didn't have fancy names for it. We did the high protein, low carb diet. That was it. And like I said before, many of my shows, they put five or six fancy names on these things to make them sound like they're really something special and scientific, and it's really not. Joe Weider used to make a scientific thing out of some of the things, but he knew it was basics. We all knew it was basics. You go in the gym, you do flat bench dumbbells, inclines, and side flies, and you're, you're done with chest. Basically, that's it. Or maybe cable crossovers. Then you can instigate other things, and I've tried doing incline presses with push-ups uh, between two boxes with my feet elevated on the bench. Got a great pump. I was telling some guys in the gym that they're working across from me, they're doing curls, and then they want to do triceps. I said, look, you're standing right there on the pulley machine. Hook the bottom pulley up with your bar that you're doing curls with, and then put one on top that you can do tricep, and go back and forth, superset, bicep, tricep, bicep, nonstop for five sets, and tell me how your arms feel after. So they did, and they said, oh my God, what a pump. Well, you're working opposing muscle groups, of course. You're getting blood in the whole arm, front and back at the same time. That's kind of a lost thing. People don't do it anymore. I think one of the reasons is the gym gets so crowded and you can't put, take a machine and say, I'll be back here in a minute. I'm going to go over there and come back and someone will steal your weights. But if you're in a position where you can actually superset them at the same pulley, do it. Or you could do seated dumbbell curls and then you could do something with lying triceps at the same time on the same bench. You find a way to be innovative. And if you're innovative and you're creative, you'll get a good body. You just find what works for you. I saw a guy come in the gym and he says, God, I don't know what to do. All the machines are being used. All right, then go there and use the dumbbells. You'll find something. You can find some alternative to what you normally do and probably you'll make better progress doing it. So I would suggest doing your workouts that way. Uh, as far as your protein goes, there's good sources of whey and casein. And I like eggs. I think eggs are a good source. And, and beef is a good source. Chicken and fish as well. Um, and you all know that it's basic foods and the supplements they have nowadays are pretty much in line and work pretty well i'm doing this collagen with the protein i think it's it's really helping me quite a bit and i know it's a big rave with the collagen but i'm using it for a wound on my leg and it's helped to it heal like in a month um anyway i just want to get that out there i think it's good information for you to use and you can try it in your workouts and i think you'll be very happy if you do and it's something different that you probably haven't done and that's what I want to say. Thank you for watching Rick's Corner. Have a great, great rest of the day wherever you are. It's towards the evening now, and I think I'm going to wait till my daughter's boyfriend comes over. I'm watching their dog for the day, and we're going to go get some prime rib. Now, that sounds good to me. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching Rick's Corner. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code DRAYSON12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson, personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding.
He's the equalizer, baby. See you next time.